Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice. Let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest Beloved in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. We come your way into your various homes this night, the most holy of all nights, Holy Saturday, to join you in praising God for granting us life, holding us together to celebrate this great event in an extraordinary way, this time around in our various homes instead of gathering in the in the churches, in, in the, the consecrated churches. Already I've shared with you last Sunday, Palm Sunday, that this week is called holy because it is the week in which the most holy things concerning our lives took place. Today we recall the night Exodus chapter 12, chapter 14, when God who lead his people, the people of Israel, as a pillar of light to move out of slavery, captivity from Egypt into the promised land. We recall this great event. I want to share with you some few words in which I want to title Think yourself or think of yourselves as dead so that you live in the light of Christ. Beloved, I want you to consider this night as a death situation. You have had an experience like this before. Indeed, you realize that there are nine readings today. That's why the celebration usually is very, very long. The first reading from Genesis about creation. The second reading also from Genesis 22 about the temptation of Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac to God. Then the third reading from Exodus 14 about the crossing of the Red Sea. The fourth reading, talking about God's love, he who is a redeemer for his people, the Holy One who calls Israel. The fifth reading also from Isaiah 55, that without God, we cannot have life. It is God who gives us life. He who sends down his reign. Then the sixth reading is the commandment of life. It is by God's word that we live we can overcome darkness because there is power in his word. Then the seventh reading from Ezekiel 36 talks about purification with water. God sanctifying his people after they had been disobedient, they had turned away from him. Then the eighth reading will be the first reading taken from the New Testament, St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 to 11. Then the gospel, according to St. Matthew, Matthew 28, 1 to 10. Nine readings, very long. But 
putting all these things together, these are the few thoughts I want to share with you. I want to relate these readings to the situation in which all of us are living in now. And I urge you, dearly beloved, that although we cannot have our usual procession from darkness into the light in the church, as a family, wherever you are united, we can pick a candle and light it, and the family can gather around to celebrate this extraordinary vigil or extraordinary celebration of the night. Dearly beloved, look at the first reading. Go back to the first reading of today from Genesis. It is God creating out of nothing. So it is a defeat of darkness. God said, let there be light. So it is God bringing light out of chaos, out of confusion. God squashes the darkness. Oh, darkness, where is your victory? Where is your power? It is not there. Then the test of Abraham, the temptation we all go through, is like a darkness moment, a moment of the night. But Abraham will come out of that temptation. Then the dark situation or the night of the Israelites as they cross the sea into that promised land. But don't forget yourself or ourselves that all of us have had this night experiences and we continue to have them. Indeed, our baptism was like a person from death to life as compared to that of Christ, the death of Christ, the eighth reading taken from Romans chapter 6, which means that we all have had an experience of the night like the Israelites before. So this time we are going through this lockdown, it's not the first time we are going through a dark experience or a night experience. We have been through before. And once we died with Christ, we also rose with him when we received baptism. And this is a clear indication that no matter how this lockdown lasts, we shall come out of it victoriously because we have had an experience like that before. For us as Christians, even that experience before we came into the light of Christ was more dangerous than what we are living in now because it was that which could be linked or associated to sin. But by the grace of God, we were brought out to share the light in the light of Christ. Beloved in Christ, we have some few things to learn on this great day. Holy Scripture figuratively uses night for adversity. That is why in the Song of Moses, Psalm 90, which is described as the Song of Moses, Psalm 90 verse 4, Moses describes the brevity of time as darkness. It says to you, Lord, a thousand years is like a night just gone. So consider this lockdown as night situation, a brevity. It will come and pass and you say, oh Lord, the lockdown was like a time of the night. It came and it went off. It came and it left. Indeed, in the New Testament, John chapter 9 verses 4, Jesus himself from his own lips says, At night, man can do no work. It is a time when man ceases labor. And indeed, many people have been locked down in their homes and cannot work, far from a few people who can work from their homes. But this dark or night situation again will be defeated by the resurrection of Christ. Then we come to the gospel where we have some wonderful elements to consider. After his crucifixion, Jesus is placed in the tomb. Then we are told that after the Sabbath, the first day of the week, 
when the first day of the week was dawning. It was not even light. It was still dark. But remember that dark situation concerning the life of Jesus did not last. That is why St. Matthew begins chapter 28 with a light situation. The darkness of Jesus' life, his death, is passing away. Then Mary of Magdala and the other Mary came to the tomb. Why did they come to the tomb? To see if Jesus was still there because after his death, they watched and saw where Christ was placed. But the elements I want to draw attention to are these. As they were coming, God was also coming. How was God coming? God was sending an angel to go and meet the women. So you realize that when they were coming, an earthquake took place. For me, I consider this earthquake for the sake of the women. Why? We are told after the earthquake, the angel approached and rolled out the stone and sat upon the stone. Then the guards who were at the tomb, we are, take, we are told, were shaking with fear. But we are not told that the women were afraid here. Indeed, we would describe, Matthew would describe their fear later on. But not here. During the earthquake, we are not told that they were afraid. It is rather the guards who were afraid. So the reason why God is also coming as the women are coming was that to move the stone out of the tomb to enable these women to see what they wanted to see. And indeed, the angel will tell them, I know what you are here for. You are seeking the crucified. You see, he is still reminding them of what happened three days ago. You are seeking the crucified, bringing to mind their pain again. That that situation, so that he can affirm that it is light now. Then the angel said, he is not here. Indeed, all the Gospels, none of them describe Jesus rising out of the tomb. Nobody saw Jesus coming out of the tomb. It is an empty tomb that we see or they saw. He said, I know you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. Come and see the place where he was laid. Then go and tell his disciples. So the dark situation of Jesus has turned into light. The darkness that covered the day before the women approached the tomb has also been clarified, has also been squashed off. They got what they wanted. Then they were filled with joy, although fearful. They set back on their way. And it was there that Jesus came to meet them. They approached and embraced his feet. And served or did homage to him. Then Jesus says, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Dearly beloved, what joy can be compared to this? What life situation can be compared to this? Don't forget, as I told you, that by our baptisms, that passage or transition from darkness, we have all had an experience that like this lockdown before. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Scripture says, The Lord has given me the tongue of a disciple to know how to comfort the weak. If this had not been an extraordinary time, maybe we wouldn't have linked the readings to the situation we are living in now. But let me suggest four points for you as we expect that this dark situation will be squashed off by the Lord for all of us. What are we supposed to do? One, we should be expectant but not anxious. We should be hopeful but not desperate that this night will be defeated. That's the first point. Be expectant that this lockdown, this situation will be defeated by our God. Oh, if Jesus rose from death, if you were able to descend with him in your baptism those days, what is this lockdown 
What is this coronavirus situation? What is this crisis to God? God will squash it. Indeed, he will crush it like the earthquake. He will use the earthquake to squash it off for us. Two, seek a godly person that shares this vision idea with you that this dark situation will be defeated by God. Mary of Magdala went with the other Mary. Seek another person and walk spiritually with him or her in the scripture. Or even on the phone, something positive you will discuss. Jettison the, the fake news. It is causing you pain. It is causing you psychological traumas. Don't share those videos. Ask for a believer, somebody who shares this vision, that this nice situation will be destroyed by God. Three, ask God to illuminate your senses, especially your sense of sight, your eyes, so that you can see already the light situations that are coming. You see, when the light is coming, it doesn't come like boom once. No, it will destroy. It will cause destructions. So, it set off small, then it looms. It looms. Gradually, then the time you realize it is illuminating and radiating that you may have to even to close your eyes. Dearly beloved, ask God, Lord, yes, Father, Cecilia will say that, yes, already there are some light situations around me. Kindly illumine in my senses so that I can see signs that this dark situation is gradually fading off. Then finally, finally, do not forget to adore and serve the Lord when this dark situation has been defeated. As Mary of Magdala, and the other Mary did. They bowed down to the feet of Jesus and did him homage. Dearly beloved, this night situation will be destroyed. It is a night, a moment of adversity, but it will be destroyed. It has been a moment of cry, desperation for people, but it will be destroyed. Don't forget, as St. Paul says in Romans 6, 11, think of yourselves as dead to sin so that you can have the life God has for you in Christ. May God grant us grace. May he inspire hope to believe that this situation shall also pass. May God bless you as you wait that this light situation will dawn you and those you love. God loves you. Amen. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hate. Fosters concord and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering. The work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise. This gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of it. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, 
and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sang. Christ, your Son, who, coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever.